trading the trends, riding the trends, understanding trends is a critical way to trade CFDs successfully. Now, trend following is perhaps one of the most popular long-term or and short-term strategies in all financial markets. As a trading strategy, it's considered by many as effective when the conditions are favorable. So, how do we define an uptrend or a downtrend? Now, there's ways that we can define these that are what we call for trend lines, which is a rule-based line you're drawing on there. But a trend in general is no different than a trend in how high you know, women's heels are going, how many red cars versus how many white cars, how many blue cars, how many gold cars. If you start to see more metallic cars are being sold in silver and gold and the market's going up, then you have a trend in the market for metallic cars. There's no rule that it has to be 600,000 metallic cars. If it's climbing steadily over the previous time periods, you have a trend. Now, you may want to define that trend more precisely before you make any corporate decisions, but the fact remains you still have a trend. In our market, we define the trends as higher highs and higher lows. When a price is moving up, it should be making a higher high than a higher low, higher high, higher low. When it's moving down, just the exact opposite. In other words, the peaks and the valleys in price movement. Now, trends are created by powerful underlying economic factors, which may not be clear at the moment. When we're trading CFDs, we only care what's going on in the short term. We don't care that the dollar is getting stronger and stronger because there's a mess in Europe. Because we're not buying dollars to put away in our safe deposit box and hoping that the dollar is going to go up. Or, you know, we're not a big corporation that's you know, swapping our money around. We're only concerned really of CFD trading in the short term. Well, if we see that the dollar is moving up, and been moving up for the last day, two days, three days, the last several hours. Okay, we have a trend, and since we're only trying to make short-term profit in a short-term market, we don't need to know. It's not that we don't need to know. We should always know the environmental factors that are affecting the asset we're trading. Okay. You should always know where the longer-term trend is. In other words. We know if you go back and look at gold over the last 20 years, that gold has been steadily trading upward, upward, upward. It's been in a very long-term uptrend. But we could see in the long term, which is the environmental look, that gold is trading upward. In the short term, the medium term, gold has fallen down. But right now in the next, and I'm not looking at gold, I'm, I'm just making a story for you. We've seen gold is climbing back up and gold is trending up. For us, the short term is all that we can trade. Okay. Now, if I was going to buy gold to put in my IRA or my portfolio, okay, I would maybe want to look at the medium term trend. Short term trend, I, I can only trade it based on what it's doing and where it's going to go over the next couple hours, next day or so. Now, it is important though to understand the weight of the factors. In other words, if, for instance, like the Euro, we know right now, the Euro has been trading at some of the lowest points it's ever been. Okay. Now, if we see the Euro start moving in an uptrend, we still know that the overall pressure is on that Euro to fall. So to push it up steadily, we have to know that, that movement, that trend upward, has got some weight on it. Whereas if the euro had been steadily trading back up for the last 60 days, and say with the euro was almost recovering and the oil crisis, gas prices, the Ukraine mess was starting to cease, we might see that we have less pressure on top of the euro. Okay, so that, upturn, that uptrend still is the same uptrend, 
but it's got more momentum, less pressure holding it down. So we want to be aware of this before making our decisions. Now, the other thing is we can have upward price movement going this way. We can have upward price movement going this way. We can have upward price movement going this way. Okay. This movement is very hard to trade. This movement's got a lot of speed, a lot of momentum. It could stop dead at any time because something pushed it radically fast. This movement is too erratic to make any sense. Or yeah. When we see a well-defined trend, the quality of the trend will help you find high probability trades. So what we're looking for is push up, ease down, push up, He's down, push up, he's down. Or in other words, higher high, higher low. Higher high, higher low. Higher high, higher low. Okay. The exact opposite in a downtrend. Lower low, higher low. Lower low, higher low. Now, remember, in a trend-based system, when we're using trend lines, okay, one of the rules of trend lines is you can't break the trend. In a trend trading strategy, we don't have rule base. Okay, so even if it breaks through and makes a higher high and then a lower high and then a higher high, but some are more dramatic than the others, but it ha it's still making these these moves. We can still trade it. Where in a, a trend when we're using a trend line, once the price has broken that trend line, we have to redraw that trend line. So trend trading and trend lines are slightly different animals. So we have to first be aware of an existence of a trend. So without identifying trend, we would be gambling and that's not the purpose of Forex trading. Now, I'm gonna give you my general my opinion now to me the market what regardless of whether you're trading metaverse you're trading google whether you're trading the euro whether you're trading bitcoin okay are totally random prices made up of millions of people doing millions of things around the globe and really makes no sense and it's completely random. But there are specific times in price movement that price exhibits non-random behavior. This non-random behavior is known as a trend. Because if you look, most of the time, price is just chopping back and forth all over the place. And like I said, it can be moving up but it's not making any type of pattern is moving up. It just happens to be that today's price was higher than yesterday's price, but it's just kind of all over the place. But when it starts exhibiting this non-random behavior, we can start making trading decisions because now we have something happening that we can explain. Now, the other thing that you have to keep in mind is that when price is moving, okay, it takes a lot of momentum. You know, 10 traders in Los Angeles aren't gonna, you know, all buying some asset, aren't gonna affect the trend. They're not even going to affect the price. It takes a lot of, lot of energy. It takes a lot of traders. Okay. Now, we're not talking about a spike up and, and a fall right back down. When price starts moving, it means that there's a huge amount of energy being ex exhausted by a huge amount of traders. Okay. So I explain this like a hamster in a wheel. 
Remember when you were kids and we had hamsters? We put we had this little cage with them in wheels, and the hamster would get in that that wheel, and he'd start puffing and puffing and you know moving that wheel and it moves slower and so to the point where that wheel started moving so fast. But he's hardly even moving. He's moving his little legs quickly, but it, you know he's not even moving. And you're saying, how is he doing it? But what happens is, this is what happens with a market. All of these little legs start going around and around, and once it starts moving, it has a lot of momentum. That market has a difficult time stopping on a dime. It's like a locomotive. When you read in the paper that you know a locomotive hit a car that's stuck on the tracks, but it was stuck on the tracks five miles away. Well, that locomotive that was traveling at 90 miles an hour can't put on its brakes fast enough to stop the, the momentum that train has without it falling off the tracks. In, in a small amount of time. Well, that's what happens in the market. Now, a lot of times we don't see that the market is losing momentum. Because even though the market is still moving up, it can be losing its momentum. And that's why we need to qualify these trends. Because a, as long as it's making higher highs and higher lows and higher highs, higher lows, it's keeping that momentum. And it's keeping the speed. And what you want is not a fast moving market. You want a market that's got a continuous speed, it's got the momentum, and it's moving in a direction. Because then you're fairly safe to trade in that momentum, in that movement, you know, as long as you're not crazy and want to stay in that market forever. And you say, okay, I'm going to take my piece of action out of this and get out of the market. Well, that's fine. Because the trend that we seek to trade is different from random fluctuations. Range patterns are similar price movements in that the price itself, in the absence of any technical indicator, can still be recognized as showing a trend. In other words, there is some driving conviction behind the price action, which allows traders to easily identify it visually. This is not something that's in the newspaper. It's not something that's coming across the headline. It's not something you see. It's not something somebody's telling you you see it because in our type of trading it's happening very very quickly now depending on the type of trend that's an uptrend or a downtrend successive highs and lows should can constitute a falling or rising pattern with relatively few irregularities and those irregularities are what when you're using a trend line which is based on rules doesn't take into consideration where trend trading allows for these irregularities but such a case is often a rarity, and the trader will have to back his technical patterns with conviction that can perhaps only be gained through other types of analysis. Now, trend trading doesn't use necessarily indicators. Trend trading uses the price on a chart. But we can combine things like volume. Volume should be steadily increasing as that trend moves up. And each time you can see that trend moving up to make a higher high, we should also see volume easing back down as it's making that lower high and then moving back up to where it was when it's making the next higher high. So volume helps support your understanding of what the markets are doing. And then we have indicators that you might want to add on such as either stochastics or MACD that are momentum indicators. Okay. We also have other indicators that are speedometers. They tell you how fast the market's moving. So even though we can notice the existence of a trend, we still need technical tools to trade it and time it. Trending markets tend to make strong moves in the direction of the trend followed by periods of consolidation or a counter trend retrace before the next leg in the direction of trend. You will notice this pattern happens in almost any trend you find. Now, the fact is when we're trading CFDs or just say online trading, whether you're trading Forex CFD, whatever you're, we have now the ability to see lots of markets. Now, one of the things I lecture on all the time 
is limit the amount of markets you're looking at. I trade the euro and the euro crosses. That's it, the majors. That's all that I do because I really personally believe you can only understand, characterize, and track and fully understand what's going on with a handful of markets. Some people want to jump from Amazon to Facebook, Facebook to Metaverse, Metaverse over to S&P 500, the S&P 500 over to the euro and the euro back to the dollar and the dollar over to Bitcoin. The fact is one of the few ways to trade all of those assets is to look for trends. Because when you're trading small markets and a limited amount of, a limited amount of, of assets, you may not see a clearly defined trend for a long time. But it's when you're trading many assets, and if you believe in trend trading, you don't need to really understand all the depth of that asset. You just need to be able to see that clearly defined trend that's offering you an opportunity. So this is one of the ways, I'm sorry, I'm trying to pop up a chart here. This is the one of the ways that we can use and look at many different assets because now we're not looking at the asset per se, we're looking at a very particular strategy. Now this is a current chart for the Euro USD. It's my teaching chart. I haven't selected it for any particular reason, so don't say that I'm advising. But we can see that we had a long, a short-term downtrend here. Hold on, let me get my marker back on here. And look, we had fall, lower low, back to higher low, lower low, higher low, lower low. But then it went into a mess. It was over. But we could have seen this, and we could have gotten into the market somewhere around here. Now, recently today. We're, not, we're still seeing a whole bunch of congested mess. Okay. But we see the beginnings of maybe a possible move. It's way too early to project. But we know the pressure on the euro is coming from above. Okay. But it's you know, here are historical low points. Okay. And it may want to recover a little bit. So we might want to look for this to see if we can see a trend developing. But we would never get in on a first or second le or third leg. We need to see the quality and the clear cut trend. And before we'd want to trade it, we would also want to fully evaluate it. Okay. And you can't do that. I, I can't do anything without support and resistance levels. Support and resistance levels explain to me what is happening in the market because I know the price points that are significantly important to this asset. So we can see my, my pale red lines are, these are on my own personal key. But my, paw, my pale red lines that are very, very skinny tell me these are fairly new levels and that's really because the euro has only been trading and recently gotten this low. But we can see the reaction. And when we got through this level, we see a fall back and scored by that level. But we need to see it break this level, come back down and start climbing through these levels. Okay. We would also want to take a look at volume. Because we would want to see some type of support with volume. And we might want to even add on some type of momentum indicator to let us know if we're in overbought or oversold territories. Now we can see here with our stochastics, we've broken above the 50 line. We're still within the barrier. Okay. But maybe when, once you know we haven't reached the overbought zone, okay. but we're still holding the upward momentum. But this is just one of the ways that we want to trade. Okay. We can see if we add on a moving average, I say, a moving average takes the noise out of the market. But I can't see with a moving average whether I actually have a clear cut, a well qualified trend. I want to see that price is actually doing something, not just steadily moving up around the noise. 
I want to see the what price is trying to tell me. I want to see that well qualified trend. Now MACD is another indicator. Let me get stochastics off of here. Okay, MACD allows me to see the momentum in the market by using the histogram. Okay. So you might want to add on other technical indicators to your decision-making capacity. Or chart patterns do very, very well. Fibonacci levels do well. But ultimately, you need to know that you have a well-qualified trend. And how qualified that trend is, is how high, highly profitable that trade is. And then we want to see how it's moving. We want to see where it might have a retest. We want to see our support and resistance levels. But mostly we want to see a well-qualified trend before we take any type of trading action. Okay. Where you would enter the market, that becomes a very personal decision. You can never pick the bottom of the lower low or the top of the, the higher high because that's like you know trying to grab a drop falling knife. But maybe when it breaks above your next resistance level and it's bouncing off after it made its lower high, you would say, okay, I'm going to get in there and ride it out through the next cycle or the next phase. Now, trending markets tend to make strong moves in the direction of the trend followed by periods of consolidation or a counter trend retrace before the next leg in the direction of the trend. So you would wanna enter in when that retrace was starting to move into that next movement in the direction of the trend so that you can ride that next leg. Typically what happens to many traders is they could achieve some potential during the periods of strong directional trend movement but they continue to trade as the market takes a breather from the trend and consolidates. It's these periods when traders may give up all the gains they just made when the market was moving aggressively. So you need to be able to learn the different identities of the different parts of the trend. And again, there's no rules, but we can see that a trending market trends and moves in spurts moving in the direction of the trend and then stalling to take a breather before another leg. But how do you know when you've gotten to the top of the trend? Well, you don't, but if it starts to break that trend, it starts to lose those higher highs and higher lows, momentum starts to ease, speed starts to ease, volume starts to contract. It's telling you, you know, that trend is in danger. So market timing never works when one is trying to predict reversal points on a technical basis. However, market timing in the context of a trend with the purpose of picking the counter trend extremes, extremes and using them to enter a trade is necessary and directs, and directs to the potential opportunities. And there lies the main principle of trend following strategies. Recognize the trend, identify the counter trend moves and use them to enter a trade in the direction of the trend. And as I mentioned, you can use MACD or other types of technical indicators to help you make your analysis. But ultimately what you have to be seeing is that well-qualified trend and the price action to be talking to you, telling you what it is doing. Now it's important you take stop losses and take profits because a stop loss, when the market starts moving steeper, that retracement starts turning to reversal because we never know when that trend's gonna end. We never know when that next retracement actually becomes a reversal or that retracement gets too deep for you to afford to be in the market. Okay. A stop loss will help you get out of that market when the market's moving, either eating up your profit. You see, I always use floating stop losses. I'm constantly moving my stop loss as the price has moved in my favor. So a stop loss order can be placed a short distance above or below the trend line, whether it's provided by a moving average or a simple line drawn on a chart. In general, the trend follower should not realize his potentials 
until he has a good reason to do so. The purpose of strategy is to focus on underlying price dynamics by stripping out volatility and short-term movements. So let's sum it up. This trading method involves a risk management component that uses three elements, the number of contracts, assets, or money you have involved, the current market price, and the current market build, the current market volatility. Exactly how much, how to buy or sell is based on the size of the trading account and the volatility of the issue. Changes in price may lead to gradual reductions or an increase in the initial trade. On the other hand, adverse prices may lead to an exit of the entire trade. So first, one of the first rules of trend following is that price should be the main concern. Traders may use other indicators showing where price may go next, but the trend, the price movement should never be second, it's first. Money management, another divisive factor in trend following is not only timing of the trade or the indicator, but rather the decision of how much to trade over the course of the trend. And risk control, cut losses is the rule. This means that during periods of higher market volatility, the trading size should be reduced. During losing periods, positions are reduced and trade size is cut back. So remember, trend following should be systematic. Price and time are pivotal. Are pivotal. So is speed and momentum. This technique is not based on analysis of fundamental supply and demand factors. But remember, there's an old adage, the trend is your friend until it ends. So trading a trend following system on a single market or only a few different markets could be suicidal. There may be long periods, even years, where there are simply no trends in any given market or asset. The key idea is to trade many markets covering all asset classes at the same time. So if you fail to do so, the strategy may simply not work. As I was saying, this is one of those strategies that you can just glance at several different charts and say, look, there I have a well-qualified trend. Okay. And then start moving forward because the markets do. I mean, trends are beautiful and when they occur. And if you wait for them to happen, and wait for them to be qualified, you'll find that you'll make good trading decisions. The investment universe will choose, you choose will have a great impact on tweaking buy and sell rules. So choose widely. You should choose a broad set of markets and avoid too high a concentration in a single sector. In the long run, a healthy balance between major market sectors yields the best results. So remember, own it, keep it simple, and just get it done. So thank you very much for joining us. Have a great trading day, and thank you for being part of the Elbexo family. Good night now.